Hello viewers, welcome to this video. In this video, we're gonna take a look at a tool called KTunnel. I came across this tool in GitHub last week when I was searching for something else and I decided to do a video on this tool, KTunnel. Okay, let me open this up in my web browser. So if I search for KTunnel, this one here, the GitHub link. So what it is and how it will be useful. So this this diagram here explaining how it can be used. So basically uh, what I will be using this for is that the best use case that I can explain for this tool KTunnel is let's say you've got a Kubernetes cluster running lots of different microservices and on your local system you're running a web application and you want one of your microservices deployed in your Kubernetes cluster to interact with the web application that you deployed on your local machine on your laptop. So in that case, KTNL will be very useful. So to the resources in Kubernetes cluster, like um, a deployment or a pod running in your Kubernetes cluster, it is just another service. So it doesn't know where it is actually running because all the magic happens in the tunnel here. So when we deploy KTNL, when we run a web application and when we start to use the KTNL client, it establishes, it creates a pod in your Kubernetes cluster and establishes a tunnel. And then the other resources that wants to access your actual web application will go through that tunnel. So that's a cool way of accessing the web application that's not running inside your Kubernetes cluster. So I would say if you're running a lot of microservices in Kubernetes cluster and the quick way to test a, an app a web application or a microservice without deploying it into Kubernetes cluster, you can make use of this. So say for example, one of the microservices, you've got like 10 microservices, a mixture of web applications and stuff. And every time you make a change, you deploy it to cluster, you check whether it's working or not. It's it's a pain going through that entire cycle. You, you obviously will have a CI system that goes through all these process, but if you want to quickly test something, just pick up one microservice, you deploy that locally on your machine, and then you use KTNL so that to all the other microservices that's running on your Kubernetes cluster, it can, they all can access this microservice that you're running locally on your laptop using KTNL. Okay, I think I've done enough talking, so let's go to the demo part. Right, so how do I install KTNL? Okay, so KTNL installation, I can either go to the GitHub releases page, download the pre-built binaries for macOS, Linux, or Windows, or if you're running macOS, you can uh, use BrewTap to install KTNL, or if you are if you already have Crew installed on your Kubernetes cluster, which is just a plugin manager, Crew itself is a plugin, I've already done a video on Crew, but if you've got Crew installed, with Crew you can install additional plugins, so this KTNL can be installed as a plugin using Crew. But I haven't got Crew installed on my cluster. I'm gonna go with uh, the first method. So I'm gonna go to the GitHub releases page and look out for the architecture and the operating system that I'm currently using, which is Linux 64-bit. Um, so I'm gonna download this star file here, Linux x86-64. So let's copy that. Go to the play directory, which is where I do most of my stuff. And then I clean up after recording this video. Wget. Right, so that's downloaded. That's KTNL. Let's untar it. And we have KTNL binary here. So I'm going to move KTNL to use the local bin. And use the local bin is already in my pod. So if I do which KTNL, you can see KTNL under use the local bin. And in the current directory, I'm going to delete everything else that I don't need. Okay, so that's gone. We have KTunnel. If I run KTunnel on its own, it's going to show me the help message. All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to use the expose command. All right, so let me explain what I'm going to do here. So I've downloaded the KTunnel binary, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a Docker container on my laptop. Let's say Docker run minus d now i don't want to run this one i should have in my history docker run minus d nginx um, i'm gonna map port 8080 to colon to port 80 on the nginx container so what this command does is it's going to bring up an nginx container a simple web application that i'm going to demo and it's going to bind 
port 8080 on my laptop to port 80 inside the container okay the port is already allocated right let's see what we are running on that port okay so webcube ctl i'm running something else on that so let's stop that so we don't have anything else at the moment so let's run the docker run command again the container to be okay so docker r minus f nginx on the command again sorry about that but anyways i didn't do a proper cleanup so now we have an nginx container running and if i go to localhost colon 8080 that's welcome to nginx that's the nginx welcome page the nginx container is running on my laptop and i also got a kubernetes cluster a two node kubernetes cluster one control plane and one worker node i don't have anything deployed in the kubernetes cluster and i have my k tunnel here all right so i've got a local application running in my laptop let's see how we can access the local application from within the kubernetes cluster okay so as i said i'm not running anything so that's the default namespace you can see there's absolutely nothing in the default namespace so now the command is k tunnel sorry k tunnel expose and then i'm going to give a random name my nginx so that's how it's going to be advertised within the kubernetes cluster okay and i'm going to map port 8080 on my local machine and i'm going to expose this port 8080 inside the kubernetes cluster all right so that's running waiting for deployment to be ready so it's going to create a pod inside my kubernetes cluster so let me open up another terminal okay kubectl get all if i do kubectl get all you can see there is this new pod my nginx so that's the same name as the the service that we created using ktunnel so ktunnel expose my nginx whatever name you give that there will be a new deployment created for that so that's actually not an nginx service the nginx container is running on my local laptop and if i do kubectl describe pod my nginx and if i look at the image so you can see it's the ktunnel image so that's the ktunnel the server side if you like so that's the server side of the ktunnel so on my laptop i'm running ktunnel which is the client side and on the kubernetes cluster we have the deployment and the pod the pod this one is actually the k tunnel server side so we are we have established a tunnel between my laptop and this pod running inside the kubernetes cluster okay so now how do we test this so we have a local application running outside of the kubernetes cluster in my laptop and when I ran the ktunnel client, it automatically created the server inside the Kubernetes cluster and established the session. Now, from within the Kubernetes cluster, we can access. So you can also see there's a service created with the name my nginx. So inside the Kubernetes cluster, if I log into any of the pod, I should be able to access my nginx colon 8080 without any problem. So for that, what I'm going to do is for quick testing, kubectl run a very simple command what i'm actually doing is kubectl run so it's going to create a pod in an interactive mode and minus minus rm is going to destroy the pod when i exit out of it so it's an interactive command and then restart equals never so it doesn't create a deployment out of this command and i'm using the alpine curl image for this that comes with curl pre-installed inside the alpine container which is lightweight uh, docker container and the actual command that i'm running is curl my nginx colon 8080 so i'm trying to access so this is this is going to create an alpine container inside my kubernetes cluster and inside the pod inside that container i'm going to run this command curl my nginx colon 8080 and if i do that so it's now downloading the alpine container which shouldn't take longer because that's a lightweight container and i and it ran the command and you can see the welcome to nginx page so that's within the kubernetes cluster and i'm accessing the nginx welcome page so that's i'm accessing the web application which is not deployed inside the kubernetes cluster but it's deployed outside of kubernetes cluster and in my laptop so that's how you use ktunnel to interact with applications outside of the cluster so this is for 
quick testing as i said earlier as i said at the start of the video if you've got a bunch of microservices and if you want to test one of them very quickly um, without having to constantly deploy that into kubernetes cluster you can do it this way create a tunnel and for this it's going to automatically create this the ktunnel server in your kubernetes cluster and it comes handy and i won't be honestly i won't be using this very often but in some cases when i'm developing something it will be very handy to use this ktunnel all right i think that's it for this video i will see you all in my next video until then keep learning and keep on learning Bye bye